up a bit on this video I'm building a car trailer and talk about loading ramps. What do you want in a good set of loading ramps? Two things. You want strength and you want lightness. You want them to be strong because you don't want them bending when you're putting the car on the trailer and you don't want them to be so heavy that you need two blokes to drag them around. And so those aluminium scaffolding planks, for example, are very, very popular and very suitable as lightweight loading ramps. But I prefer these ones that I built made out of steel. Well, let me give you a close up look at them. There are as many ways of attaching car ramps to trailers as there are guys around the world building them. I'm dead against car trailers that have their ramps hinged like this because you put all the weight up high and out the back and it's just a recipe for fishtailing as far as I'm concerned. Like I said, there's more than one way of attaching your ramps and there's some good ideas here. I prefer a system, um, some guys have a, a, a sheet plate that goes over the top with a bolt in it. I don't like that setup really. I prefer a system that just clips in and clips out and you don't have to worry about fastening anything while you're using it. So I want a simple system but I want it to be a strong one. The main beams on these loading ramps are made out of 25 by 50 rectangular steel and the treads are made out of 25 by 25 angle. And each ramp has a piece of angle iron welded onto the end of it which is used as part of my quick lock system. I've got a particular way of making the mount that holds the tongue in each of those loading ramps on either side of the trailer. But I'll show you that in detail as I make it for my new car trailer. Now let me show you where these ramps go on this trailer that I built and how they're held safely in position for transport. These ramps have a piece of flat steel at either end between the treads with a large hole drilled in it. And this is what holds them down. I've got two of the largest bolts that I could find welded on the drawbar. And I've turned nuts for them into fly-off spanners just by welding on those arms. So the ramps are loaded onto the bolts. Both ropes, both ramps go on here and are held down by the big nuts. Having these in front, I've found no disadvantage with towing. The front of the car comes to about here, just over them, so I can get them out with the car on the trailer, and I haven't had any problems with uh, the car reversing it on tight angles with the car hitting them. So on a, on a conventional trailer, my personal preference is to put them there. They're out of the way and they're really easy to get to, much easier to get to than when you uh, bolt your ramps underneath the car. But each to his own. And here's some other ideas if you're building a trailer. Stowage of the spare wheel, weld a wheel brace on the nut that holds it so it's ready to hand when you need it. And put angled protectors in front of anything that sticks out like your guards or your tyres so that uh, at slow speed when you're backing around a garage or something like that or a yard if you nerf anything you won't damage uh, the tyre or anything sticking out. It'll just glance off. With a car trailer, you're always climbing on and off it when the car's on it. So to avoid a big jump off it, I always put steps wherever I can. So here, I've combined protection for the taillight and the mudguard with putting in a step. And this is the best one of all. I've put this one between the wheels, and that tends to be the one I use all the time to get up into the car because it's right opposite where the car door is. And here's an accessory I consider essential on any good car trailer. An electric winch. You can get these on eBay cheap as chips. I think this is a 3,000 pound pull. It'll pull anything, pull a four wheel drive. You need a really strong post for it and you can see where I braced it back with these two strips back to the bolts that hold the tow coupling. Uh, you rarely use this with your race car. If your race car breaks down, what tends to happen, particularly if you've got a drop tire one, like the ones I built, is guys will give you a hand in the pits and just push it on easily. But when you're getting wrecks out of salvage yards or old trucks that have been sitting under trees for 30 years, 
and they are, nothing's going to move or turn, the winch is invaluable. And all I do, I don't have a battery on the trailer, I just, um, if I'm going to use the winch, I bring a spare battery. If I need to uh, use the winch to load the race car, I just take the battery out of that and sit it there and use that. When it comes to making the strips that the tongue on the ramps will drop into, most guys on the trailers that I borrowed who use this method have used uh, just flat steel. And the problem with using flat steel here is that sooner or later you or someone who's borrowing your trailer is going to reverse and bump into something and that flat steel will just get squashed in and you'll go around to unload the car and you won't be able to get the tongues in, on the top of the ramps in that slot. So instead of flat here I prefer to use angle iron. I cut the ends and fold them in. I drill holes in it to stop water accumulating at this point. And then I cut this, this is 40 mil uh, by 40 mil angle. After the holes are drilled, I'll trim this down so it's about half that width. And then I'll weld it on. I'll show you as I make it. I don't know about you, but I've never seen electric brakes before. I'm interested to see how they work. Electricity comes in here, and uh, this is an electromagnet. So when the uh, power from the braking circuit uh, is applied, this becomes a magnet, and, and it wants to grab the, uh, the drum, which is revolving, and so the magnetic force causes it to grab onto the drum and follow it and pull the brakes on. A simple idea but uh, one that works. Virtually other than that electro electromagnet there's no parts in this to wear out. There's no wheel cylinders to leak or anything like that. And uh, you've just got the normal random adjuster threaded screw up there. Very simple. Looking at the drum, you can see where that magnet's been trying to grab the drum and has polished it on the end. One axle and just put it back temporarily in position with the wheels on it and that allows me to measure exactly the length I need for the new axles.